You may have heard of that CHIPS Act, which President Biden signed into law about 10 days ago. Part of it includes $52 billion worth of your tax money aimed at American semiconductor research, development, manufacturing, and workforce development. That is a bunch of money going to a bunch of things, which made us wonder, what are we getting out of that? Let's take a look in our big story. In the greater Portland area, including Hillsborough and Southwest Washington and even Corvallis and beyond, the place is known as the Silicon Forest. So it stands to reason that such a big chunk of tax money is going to spur a lot of growth here, right? Yeah, it might. Something called the Oregon Semiconductor Competitiveness Task Force has been looking at opportunities and the roadblocks to more high-tech investment and growth in Oregon. Their findings? Well, Good and bad. First, the good. Semiconductor research and development is Oregon's competitive advantage, and there are a lot of smart, talented people here who can do that work. But now the bad. According to the report, we need more buildable industrial land close to big cities and places where people want to live. That's one reason Intel did not even consider Oregon when it went to Ohio to build two huge new chip manufacturing facilities. We also need more incentives. Other states offer incentive packages that are both larger and more specifically tailored to the semiconductor industry than Oregon does. And Oregon's regulations are complicated and too slow. The report points out that other states offer a more streamlined approach that's more in sync with the speed of the market. Duncan Weiss here is the president of the Oregon Business Council and helped bring the task force into existence. He said it is time for Oregon to get going. We need to catch this wave, and to do that, we've got to step up. We've got, in particular, I mean, in, on all fronts, research, talent, um, land, uh, regulation, and, and, and tax incentives. If we put these together, we have an unbelievable opportunity to provide great jobs for Oregonians who might otherwise not have them and to generate a lot more revenue for public services and community benefit. And frankly, to take the pride that we are one of the centers in the world that is leading in semiconductor. I mean, that, that is a real prize that I don't know that Oregonians understand um, how great we are already and, and how you know, we could really continue to be the world leader in semiconductors. So that's a lot, but bottom line, according to the task force, if we want more high-tech industry here, we need to make it a lot easier for them to come here and expand. And there is a chance of some expansion. Intel, Oregon's largest for-profit employer, hopes to tap into some of the $2 billion of the CHIPS Act money that's being set aside for something called the National Semiconductor Technology Center, according to the report. The task force report states that Intel has developed a proposal for an advanced lithography center to be located in Oregon and funded under the NSTC, which refers back to that $2 billion program I just mentioned. Okay. So that's a look at the future. But we know that some companies are looking at Oregon right now. The Oregonian is reporting that the state is courting three semiconductor companies that might build here. The combined investment could be as much as $8 billion. In the meantime, Washington Senator Maria Cantwell was in Camas yesterday touring the Enlight Company. They make high-powered semiconductor and fiber lasers. We asked how America's semiconductor industry fell behind others around the world. The industry itself has transitioned so fast. There's so much development that happened. But there was a point in which international uh, activity really kind of stepped up their game in Korea, in Taiwan, and other places, and literally started producing manufacturing at a lower rate. Lots of incentives by their governments, and those incentives spurred even more of a concentration in some very you know, specific areas in Asia. And we learned through COVID that we just can't rely on other countries for a critical part of our supply chain, and to have the shortages we've been having has been affecting the price of everything. Senator Cantwell helped push through the CHIPS Act. She said it is critically important the U.S. reestablish itself as a place to make semiconductor chips and to keep innovating. 
So the United States, with this bill and investment in science, is learning how to get more um, out of the chips that we do produce, which is becoming more challenging because we're asking them to do more things. We're asking them to, to help negotiate a driverless car. That's a lot of information and a lot of processing power. So we have to keep investing in the, the chip production itself in the substrates and the technology of the development and see how we can get more um, efficiency out of the chips without creating uh, more heat and more um, capacity challenges. So this is something we think uniquely the United States can do and our national labs are gonna work on it and here in Southwest Washington. So it's a huge industry and has lots of implications for lots of us. So we're going to keep talking about this. We talked about it with Oregon Senator Ron Wyden on Straight Talk with Laurel Porter. He's the co-chair of Oregon Semiconductor Task Force, the one that I just mentioned. Here's what he said about it. You released a big report this week about how Oregon can strategize to uh, bring in more semiconductor business into the state. What's the upshot of that report and, and how is the CHIPS Act going to help Oregon? The, the CHIPS Act plus what's being done at the state level constitutes a battle plan for us to keep the good jobs we have in semiconductors and we have one of the largest state uh, levels of percentage of people working in this, uh, this field and they're good, good paying jobs and then go get some more. And the report yesterday and my legislation that passed, I wrote the provision that provides billions of dollars for manufacturing dovetails very nicely. One of the recommendations that was made by the um, state folks is to have larger plots of land available for manufacturing sites. We're already known for our research and development. Now we've got to have more manufacturing to complement it. My legislation gives me a chance to work with the state on getting those additional manufacturing jobs in semiconductors in Oregon in addition to what we're uh, known for, which is our worldwide quality research and development. One of the big obstacles I was reading about is having land that, that works for these companies. How big of an obstacle is that? That's what I was touching on. The state report you know, talked about setting aside two plots of land that would be large enough for significant manufacturing. I'll be working with the state officials so that as they go forward with that, my legislation that provides billions of dollars in investment tax credits for those operations will dovetail. Now, critics say that this legislation disproportionately benefits Intel over other U.S. chip companies. What it do you doesn't. Think? It, it benefits anybody who's going to be part of developing what we use every single day from the time you get up in the morning till the time you go to bed at night. We use semiconductors on everything. So we'll be watching to see how all this plays out. I gotta tell you, the skeptic in me suspects Oregon lawmakers will not move fast enough to lure those new manufacturing companies here, but I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. We'll check in on this story from time to time and let you know how it's going.